everyone, and welcome once again to Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. And today's review has certainly been a long time coming. Yes, after a grueling eight year wait, Rebor has finally released their hulking Triceratops figure, nicknamed Trident. This trike was meant to be sold as an addition to the original King Rex and Fallen Queen diorama set to create a story of conquest, sorrow, and vengeance. But through countless delays and several prolonged periods of radio silence on Rebor's part, it would take nearly a decade for this final piece of the puzzle to be released. I do find it a funny coincidence that Rebor waited until they released an entirely updated T-Rex sculpt to finally buckle down and get this guy done, but I digress. So today, we're gonna decide if this trike was worth the wait. As far as the figure itself goes, there are two variants of this thing. The one you see now is the aptly named Horn of Doom variant, while the other is a more vibrantly colored full horn specimen nicknamed King. Although I liked the color scheme of King, I felt the massive size and gnarled hide of the sculpt gave the impression of a battle-hardened old bull, and details like a broken horn and scarred eye really added to that aura while injecting the figure with a unique history. So yeah, Horn of Doom was my first choice, no questions asked. But going in for a closer look at that mean looking head, you can see the face of this figure has been adorned with scales of varying sizes that surround the flaring nostrils and run across the snout and up the frill. Raised scales then frame the orbits and surround the horns, and the serangular and angular region has been adorned in pyramidal growths, adding to this guy's rough appearance. The eyes are very nicely done on this figure, especially for Rebor standards. There's a lot of life in the olive green eye on the right side, much more than you typically get with just the gold and black coloration, and I love the red rim that surrounds it. Meanwhile, the opposite side has been scarred over with one dead eye, painted a glossy milky green color to sell the look, and man, that's gotta be the most haunting gaze I have ever seen on a dinosaur model. Of course, the real focal point of any Triceratops would be the frill and horns. You can see the frill has been rimmed with massive pointed epocipitals and textured with both flat and raised scales. As for the horns on this thing, they're amazing. The texture and subtle fades of paint really give them a worn and lifelike appearance. I'm particularly fond of the uneven growth of the nasal horn, but of course the defining feature on this particular variant is that broken left brow horn. All the cracks and uneven points of breakage really sell the look of it being snapped off. And the fact that the uneven texture is continued within the core is a great detail. That said, I think it could have benefited from an extra wash to really bring out all of those cracks and crevices. You know what would have been awesome? Just a wash of rusted brown, like a dried blood across this horn. That would have been killer. The jaw on this figure is articulated and opens to reveal a glossy, wrinkled pink tongue set between rows of small grinding teeth. And I gotta say, I was skeptical of this thing having an articulated jaw, but the articulation here impressed me quite a bit. Sure, there's a seam line because of it, but with the exception of the beasts of the Mesozoic line, I can't think of many examples of Ornithischian figures that have decent jaw articulation, especially with the extra tissue of the quote-unquote cheeks factored in. And I actually think the construction of this figure exceeds that of the beasts of the Mesozoic line. There, I said it. It's sturdy, smooth, closes flush, even without the cheeks getting in the way. Of course, extra buccal anatomy seems to have fallen out of vogue, but this is where I think the seam line actually comes in handy. If you just keep the jaw closed, it could almost work as the extended oral margin, which I think is a lemonade out of lemons kind of situation. Moving on from the head to the body, there's a lot of great skin and scale details on this thing. You can see folds of flesh gathering and pulling in the turn of the neck before buckling up against these shoulder blades. 
You have got some tension lines of skin forming from the positioning of the limbs, as well as more rolls of skin being pushed up against or pulled away from the base of that incredibly stubby tail. As far as the integument goes, there's an interesting mix of design elements, ranging from flat, randomly shaped, non-overlapping scales, to spasmodically dispersed tubercle growths along the flanks, and spikes that run in parallel rows across the plated back. It may not be as sharp as the detail work on the face, but it succeeds as a loose interpretation of the Lane skin impressions and makes for one gnarled looking hide that adds a lot to this figure's intimidating look. The legs are incredibly robust and feature great folds of skin forming with the movement of the animal. The areas of buckling skin in the elbow look great, as do the wrinkles adorning the kneecaps, and the hind limbs even feature an interesting detail in the form of overlapping scalloped shaped scales that adorn the front of the thigh and ankle. I feel like I've seen this detail somewhere before, perhaps it was Rebor Stegosaurus figures, but it feels much more at home on this particular sculpt. The feet themselves are tipped with sharpened brown claws, but the front feet do feature five weight-bearing claw digits as opposed to the normal three. And the back feet even have a very pronounced dew claw, which I will politely call an interesting feature for Triceratops. Then again, it's not like this is meant to be an accurate trike. It's just meant to be a stylized take on the animal. And sometimes that's okay. Moving along the underside, you can get a look at the strong muscles of the mandible, as well as where all the skin gathers and hangs under the throat above the armored pectorals and gut. The detail down here is primarily rectangular scales, as well as more folds of skin around the stomach and limbs. The pose is one of a hurried gait, with a lifted right foot while the weight of the animal is shifted forward onto the left and the head angled slightly downward. This movement is then emphasized by a slight curvature to the spine. It's active enough to play as a charge, but not so extreme that it couldn't pass as an amble. But either way, it holds a certain power and looks incredibly intimidating from a head-on view. But of course it can be enjoyed from many different angles. And that's the sculpt of this thing. And I absolutely love it for what it is. Just a hardcore take on Triceratops. I've seen some people saying this sculpt is just a ripoff of the old Sideshow sculpt. And I guess I can see some superficial similarities, but I still think it's got enough of that Rebor flair to make it its own thing. As far as the paint job goes, it's a mix of cream and golden brown tones on the underside with a gray-blue dorsal coloration that runs down the legs and marks the thighs and tail in a striped pattern. It's certainly the duller coloration of the two variants, but to me it comes across as pigmentation that's been dulled and faded by a long and hard life. Again, playing into the old bull angle. As far as the size of this figure goes, it's enormous. Excluding the horns, the figure measures a whopping 10 inches long or just under 25 and a half centimeters in a straight measurement, but comes in at an impressive 12 inches or around 30.5 centimeters if you went along the curve of the spine. And then to the top of the frill, this trike stands in at just under five inches or roughly 12.5 centimeters off the ground. Now Triceratops was a big animal indeed, measuring in at 26 to 30 feet in length, but those measurements would still put this figure around 126 to 130 scale. So certainly a little big for the advertised 135 scale. If you're really serious about keeping your collection in scale, then this could be seen as a negative, but I feel like the exaggerated size does complement the stylized sculpt here. 
For size comparisons, we've got a lot to go through, so get comfortable. I'll start by bringing in the other trikes from my collection. First up, here it is with PNSO's 2021 Doyle the Triceratops to compare it with a more grounded and updated take on the animal. And in the same vein, we have Eofana's Triceratops, the dominant variant. And let's get some beasts of the Mesozoic figures in here. First up, we have the 135 scale or sub-adult offering. And then here it is next to the massive 118th scale figure. And as a final accurate Triceratops comparison, let's bring in the classic Batat sculpt. Still quite the pleasing model all these years later. Now for a not so accurate comparison, here it is with the Nanmu Triceratops, and you can see that Rebors holds its own even against that big beast. And just for the heck of it, here's Trident with PNSO's Wilson, and yeah. I think Wilson here is biting off a bit more than he can chew with this particular confrontation. But of course, the comparison we all want to see. Eight years in the making, here is Horn of Doom alongside the King T-Rex, Fallen Queen, and Infant Triceratops Hazelnut by Rebor. And wow, is this ever a delight to finally be able to have on display together. I mean, it's far from perfect. I think Trident is a bit too big, not only for his mate, but also for the King Rex. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's gonna be a fair fight, but then again, maybe that's the point. Maybe we want to see the King get his butt kicked after what he did to Trident's queen. I don't know. It also might have been nice if Trident came with a base of his own that connected in some way with the Queen's pedestal and Hazelnut's little patch of ground, just so that they could all be connected in some way, like what Rebor did with the Acrocanthosaurus, Tenontosaurus, and Deinonychus trio. Think of how weird that would have looked if, say, the Acrocanthosaurus didn't come with its own little base. Without it, it doesn't feel like Trident is really... I don't know, connected to the larger scene. And I know there are plenty of people out there who don't like Rebor's King Rex. I myself think it's one of their worst offerings, even given its age. I won't even say it aged like milk. It was ugly when it came out eight years ago, and it's ugly now. And not in a cool way like Trident here. So the question becomes, is this diorama set even worth tracking down anymore? Well... Yeah, I still think there's some fun to be had with it all together, even just as a novelty or a reminder of Rebor's long journey to get here. And even if you can't stomach having the King Rex on your shelves, there's still room to use Trident alongside just the Fallen Queen, or just Hazelnut, or all together as a broken family unit. Heck, if you want, you can even use Rebor's new Rexes in the King's Place. I'm sure that's part of why this trike even got to see the light of day, but I am getting ahead of myself talking about those Rexes. And that was Rebor's Horn of Doom Triceratops figure. All told, it certainly won't be winning any beauty pageants or awards for scientific accuracy, but this is still one dope looking trike. In fact, I like it so much that I am sorely tempted to drop 60 bucks on the other variant. I think it's worth it. For some, it might be too out there, and for others, it might be too little too late, but I for one am so glad to finally own it. It might not be the most up-to-date or even original sculpt, but it still manages to stand out amidst a sea of incredible competition from recent years. And that's a commendable feat from Rebor, if you ask me. Even if you're not interested in the diorama aspect, if you like Rebor's unique style, or just want one badass looking Triceratops for your collection, then this is easily the one for you. I definitely dig it, and I am so glad Rebor finally got their act together and delivered such a cool Triceratops. At long last, the Queen is avenged.
But as always, I want to know what you guys think of this figure. Do you own it yet? Are you planning to pick one up? Which variant do you prefer and why? Leave a comment down below and thank you once again for tuning in to today's episode of Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Because now that we've taken a look at a Triceratops, I think it's high time we talk about its mortal enemy. But until then, take care out there and bye bye